Hello and welcome. It's time for a new quarterly card making challenge, Kendra's card challenge number 10. If you're not familiar with my quarterly card challenges, it's where you can create a bunch of cards using just six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern paper with very little scraps left over. For this challenge, you can create 15 standard American A2 sized cards. If you've ever heard of a one sheet wonder, it's like that, but times six. You can have a chance to win lots of crafty goodies by sharing your creations throughout the quarter. Now this challenge runs from April 1st to June 30th of 2023. And for this quarter, there are 19 company prize sponsors with over $1,000 worth of prizes that will be given away throughout this challenge. I'll share details on the prizes and how to enter the challenge shortly. But basically to sum up the challenge, you would use the cutting templates and card sketches that are provided in the free PDF printable that is available for download on my website, kendrascardchallenges.com. You'll want to pick out six coordinating pattern papers and assign them to each of the color coded papers A through F. This can be either six by six paper or 12 by 12 paper that's cut down. Then you will cut the papers using the cutting templates and sort the pieces for each of the 15 card sketches. You'll also need some matching colored cardstock for the layers and card bases, and then you can decorate the cards with whatever stamps, dies, ephemera, or embellishments that you'd like following the sketches. Now this challenge is not company specific, which means you can use whatever supplies you have in your stash. This challenge is a great way to use up those paper pads and get a set of coordinating cards in the process. The first page of the printable shows the cutting guides for the first two sheets of pattern paper. The pink and yellow are labeled as papers A and B. All of the measurements are listed for each piece and there are scissors on each cutting guide to show which part of the paper needs to be cut first. There's circled numbers on each piece, which indicates which card sketch the piece goes with. There's also arrows on each piece to show the direction of how it will be placed on each of the card sketches. The dark gray pieces are scraps. You will notice that on all of the papers for this challenge, the arrows do not go the same direction. So that means you'll want to use patterns that are non-directional, meaning that it doesn't matter which way you turn the paper. And if you want to use patterns that need to go a certain direction, then you'll definitely want to pay attention to those arrows. You may have to rotate your card sketch to be landscape instead of portrait but I would recommend that you pick non-directional patterns for this particular challenge to make it easier. The third and fourth sheets of pattern paper, which are green and blue, are labeled as paper C and D. And a few of these pieces have diagonal cuts on them, and I will show you how to cut the papers here shortly. And then the fifth and sixth sheets are purple and peach, and those are labeled as paper E and F. Now the cutting template for papers D, E, and F are very similar. Now here are the card sketches. There's a total of 15 cards for this challenge, and this page shows the first six. Since everything is color coded, it makes it easy to see what goes where. But everything that is gray, black, or white, you can use white or colored cardstock, or even additional sheets of pattern paper if you'd like. Now, card sketch one shows a piece from paper A with a banner going across the bottom. You can add a focal image sitting on top of the banner. And then sketch two uses a large diagonal strip from paper A. And for the back panel, it states to use an embossed or stenciled panel. And you can use any shape you'd like here in place of the oval that's around two inches by three inches. And then sketch three uses a rectangle piece from paper A, but also pulls in two pieces from paper B, but that they're made to look like it's a strip. You can add a focal image on top of paper A or wherever you'd like. And then sketch four uses pieces from papers A and B with a piece of matching solid cardstock between the two patterns. Sketch five is another one that calls for an embossed or stenciled panel. And then sketch six, it has a strip from paper B and a small rectangle from paper C. You can stamp your image or sentiment on the white rectangle piece. And this page on the printable includes a QR code that you can scan, which will take you directly to the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group page, where you will post your photo of all 15 cards to enter the challenge. But there are a few changes to entering the challenge for this quarter, which I'll talk more about in a bit. So stay tuned so that you don't miss that. The next page shows sketches 7 through 12. 
Sketch 7 has two different shades of green on the panel, which means you'll make a cut in the center and fold it back to reveal the other side. So if you're using one-sided papers, you'll want to add a pattern to the back for this particular sketch. And then you can add whatever focal point you'd like where the circle is. And then for sketch 8, this is where you're going to take the two squares from paper C and cut one of them in half and layer them as shown here on the sketch. You will add a sentiment and some embellishments to the right. And then sketch 9 has three flags along with a strip from paper C. This sketch has pieces from four different papers. So if you find that they don't coordinate very well together, you can swap these out with so solid colored cardstock or other pattern paper scraps that do match. Sketches 10, 11, and 12 are pretty much the same except for the placement of the focal point and the sentiment. You'll notice how they are all placed on paper F on the sketches, but you can certainly move this around to wherever it fits best for the pattern paper that you chose. I just picked a more subtle pattern for paper F with my first set of cards. So you probably want to keep this in mind when choosing your papers. The next page shows the last three sketches, numbers 13 through 15. Sketch 13 combines papers D and E. And since they meet together in the middle, this is a really good card sketch for making a gatefold card just for something different. I will link a video above for a tutorial on how to make a gatefold card in case you're not familiar. But the focal point would go on the left with the sentiment tucked underneath. If you make a gatefold card, this could be placed on the belly band. And then for card sketch 14, it has three strips from papers D, E, and F. And of course, three different elements. Whether you want to use shapes, embellishments, or even critters here, you don't have to use the hearts. And then for sketch 15, you'll take the small strips from papers D and E and trim off the edges once you glue them down on top of the rectangle piece. The strip in the back is from paper F. The bottom part of this page includes instructions with some helpful hints, like using larger mats to cut out smaller mats that will be hidden behind the pattern paper to save on supplies, and also rotating or flipping the card sketches to make it work with your theme or your papers. You can adjust the size of the sentiments to meet your needs and even add extra details and embellishments if you'd like. The card sketches really are just a starting point to get your creative juices flowing. The last paragraph explains how to enter the challenge to be eligible to win prizes. For a complete list of prizes you can win, visit kendrascardchallenges.com. Now, if you've participated in my card challenges before, this is something new that I have added to the printable. One of the members of my Facebook group made a chart for the last challenge to easily show what papers will need to be matched with others for each of the card sketches. And I thought this was a fantastic idea. So I decided to use it and make a quick reference guide for you all. This lets you know which papers are on each card sketch so you can make sure that what you pair together coordinates well. This should help and make things a little bit easier when you're assigning your papers. For the most part, papers A, B, and C need to match and then papers D, E, and F need to match with the exception of card sketch nine, which pulls in additional papers. But like I mentioned before, if the papers don't look right, you can swap it out with solid card stock or scraps of pattern paper that does match. This sheet also lists all of the company prize sponsors with links to their websites. So if you click on the links in the PDF file, then it'll take you straight there. If you're not familiar with some of these companies, I hope you will check them out and see what all they have to offer. On the right, it also explains my Patreon membership program and all of the benefits that you can receive if you join as a patron. Creating these challenges each quarter does take a lot of time, so joining as a patron helps to support my work and it helps to keep these challenges free each quarter. So starting at just $5, you can receive a handmade card from me each month, plus access to a printer-friendly version of the challenge and access to previous archive challenges. For $10 as an all access patron, you can receive everything I've already mentioned, plus early access to new card challenges, bonus printable files each month, and these can include digital sentiments, digital images, one sheet wonder files, card making tutorials, digital card making kits, and more. 
And for $25, VIP patrons receive additional benefits on top of what has already been mentioned. And these include a live crafty Zoom session with me each quarter and a card making kit that includes papers, cardstock, die cuts, or ephemera, and embellishments. These are shipped out at the beginning of the third month of each quarter. For more information about my Patreon, you can scan the QR code on the printable or visit the link that's listed. I'll also have this linked in the description box below. Let me go ahead and show you the first set of cards I made while creating this challenge. I used the Sweet On You paper pad by Honey Bee Stamps. I'll place the card sketch in the top left corner, and I'll also list the main products I used for each of the cards down in the description box below. While I show you these cards, I'll provide a little more details about entering the challenge. As mentioned before, you can find the free printable on my website, kendrascardchallenges.com. It includes that QR code that you can scan with the camera on your mobile device that will take you directly to the Facebook group called Kendra's Card Challenges. You can also find the link to the Facebook group in the description box below. Now you'll have to agree to some group rules before you'll be approved to join since it's a private group. But in this group is where you will upload your photo of all 15 cards. Now for this challenge, there will be different photo albums for each month during the quarter rather than just one photo album. Another change for this quarter is that I will need everyone to include their name and country of residence in the caption for the photo. This is for prize awarding purposes. Most of the prizes can be won by card makers worldwide, but there are some physical products that will need to be shipped and will only be eligible for U.S. participants. In the featured posts at the top of the group, you will find instructions on how to locate and post to the photo albums using both a computer and a mobile device. It is important that you post in the photo album so that I can locate your entry. Just posting your photo on the group wall does not count as an entry. There are also separate photo albums for each card sketch where you can share a photo of each card individually. Now uploading individual card photos isn't a requirement to be entered to win one of the quarterly prizes, but this is how you will enter to win one of the monthly prizes. Plus everyone can see the cards up close a little better. Well, what's great about the individual albums is that you can post the pictures as you finish them throughout the quarter and still be eligible to win some of the prizes even if you don't get to finish all 15 cards. But you can officially enter the challenge up to three times but only once per month throughout the quarter. But please feel free to share all of your creations in the Facebook group if you decide to do more. Now, if you're not on Facebook, you can upload your photo using the form that's linked on my website to officially enter the challenge. You can also upload your creations to other social media platforms using the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 10 and KCC10 so that others can see your creations and be inspired. However, this will not count as an entry, so either use the form or upload to the official entry photo albums on Facebook. Now here are the papers that I have assigned for my second set of cards for each of the cutting templates. I'm using the Back to Basics paper pad from Honey Bee Stamps. I decided to go with a black and white theme this time. These are the six sheets I have assigned to each of the cutting templates, papers A through F. Now I'm using the checkered pattern for paper A and the hexagon and geometric pattern for paper B. And then for paper C, the tiny dots. And then for paper D, the stripes, and for paper E, it has larger dots, and then paper F has the diamond pattern with the chevron on the back. And I'll be using both sides of these papers for my cards. So now I'll show you the best way for cutting the papers using the templates. Before you get started, you'll want to have something to put the paper pieces in once you cut them to help keep you organized. I like to use cellophane sleeves that are numbered, but envelopes would also work or even pre-cut card bases. Look for the scissors on the cutting template. This indicates where you will cut first. For paper A, the cutting guide shows that the first cut will be at four and a quarter inches and the bottom piece is for sketch number two. And then the top piece, you're gonna turn it and then cut it in half at three inches. And the piece that's on the left is for card sketch one. And then you'll take the one on the right and cut it at two and a quarter inches. 
and then the strip on the far right should measure three and three quarter inches. So you will have to cut off a scrap piece off of the end. And then this strip is for card number four. And then you'll take the remaining piece, turn it and cut this at three and one quarter. And the larger piece is for card three and the smaller piece is for card nine. And that piece will eventually be cut into a banner. But to keep things organized, I'm gonna go ahead and place these pieces in my cellophane sleeves by number. Now I won't do this for all of the papers in this video to save time, but you definitely wanna keep track of which pieces go with each card sketch, whether you use bags or envelopes, storage sleeves, or even containers. Now the second sheet of paper, paper B, I'm gonna go ahead and cut where the scissors indicate at four inches. And then you will want to take the bottom piece and turn it and cut at five and a half inches. And this small piece will be for card nine and the larger piece is for card six. And then now for the top part, we're going to place it on the long edge and we're gonna cut it at three and three quarter inches. And the piece on the right is for card five and then you'll take the piece on the left, turn it and cut at two and a half inches. And that big piece is for card number four. And then you'll cut this last piece in half at one and seven eighths of an inch. And this is for card sketch number three. Now to cut paper C, my first cut will be at three and three quarter inches. And then on the left piece, you're gonna cut off the bottom strip at five inches. The large piece is for card seven and the bottom piece is for card nine. Then you'll wanna take the piece on the right and turn it and cut it at two and a quarter inches and then cut the next square at two and a quarter inches. And then the leftover piece is for card six. This middle square needs to be cut at a diagonal. So I'm going to line up the corner of each opposite end in the cut line of my paper trimmer. The square and the two triangles will be for card sketch eight. Now for paper D, I'm going to make my first cut at four inches. And since I'm using stripes here, I'm just looking at the arrows on the cutting guide to see which direction I want my stripes to go before making the first cut. So again, I will cut at four inches and then I'm gonna take the right piece and cut that at five and a quarter inches. And the bottom piece is for card 15. And we're gonna hold off on cutting the top part of the strip for now. And now for the left side, you're going to turn it and cut at five and a quarter inches. The bottom strip is for card number 14. We're gonna save these two pieces and cut them after cutting papers E and F. If you look at the cutting guides, you'll see that the cutting is the exact same for paper E as it is for D and all but the right hand strip for paper F. So we'll go ahead and cut papers E and F up until this point. So I'll speed this up a bit since the instructions are the same. Since the far right strip for paper F isn't going to be cut like papers D and E, I'm gonna go ahead and place it in the bag for sketch 15. So now I have these three panels that measure four by five and a quarter, and we're going to cut these diagonals here as shown on the cutting guide. Now you can use either a ruler or your paper trimmer to make the marks with a pencil. So from the top right corner, you're going to measure down two inches and make a mark. And since I'm using my paper trimmer, I'm making the mark in my cut line. Then from that pencil mark, you'll wanna measure down one and a quarter inches. From that mark to the bottom should measure two inches. And then you're going to flip this over and you're gonna measure one and a quarter inches. Now that I can use the measurements on the top of my paper trimmer, I'm placing the edge at my cut line and I'm just gonna mark it. Then I'm going to move the dot to my cut line and measure over two and three quarter inches and make another mark. 
and then from the dot to the edge should measure one and a quarter inches. So now that the dots are made, I'm going to keep the panels lined up and cut all three at the same time. I'm going to line up the dots in my paper trimmer, which are at an angle, making sure that the dots are in the cut line. So now I'm gonna line up the other dots and cut. And since we're cutting all three at the same time, it doesn't really matter if the measurements aren't exactly correct. Once they are cut, you'll wanna look at the numbers again on the cutting guides to know which sketch to sort them with. And then for the strip pieces for papers D and E, these are also going to be cut the same. So I'm doing both at the same time. You wanna measure at two and five eighths of an inch and make a mark with your pencil. Then you'll take the corner of your paper and line it up with the pencil mark and make your first cut. Then you're gonna flip it over and line up the stencil mark with the other corner. So the way card sketch 13 is going to work is that you'll place the pieces on your card front like this. Now I know this pattern is different, but I wanted something different. But like I mentioned earlier, you can make a gatefold card with sketch 13 since the pieces meet in the middle or you can just glue that on the front of a regular card it's still a fun layout so now that all of the papers are cut and the pieces are sorted in the cellophane bags i have my matching cardstock ready to cut all the layers now all of the layers and extra pieces of cardstock that you'll need for your cards are marked with measurements on the card sketches you can get creative and use different textures for any of the non-pattern paper pieces and strips Use embossing folders or stencils for any plain panels or add ribbon or fun embellishments or ephemera. You don't have to keep it plain like it's shown on the sketch. But I want you to be creative. Get creative and use the sketches to cut all of your layers. Now I want to share a page from the April monthly bonus printable that's available for all access and VIP patrons. This is a combination of digital images and sentiments that are designed to fit the different shapes and elements on each of the card sketches for challenge 10. The first sheet shows nothing but birthday images that you see here. The second sheet is about thank yous. And the last sheet includes all occasion sentiments and images. I'm not gonna show these on camera, but just know that there's three full pages of different types of images and sentiments that you can use with challenge 10. But what I absolutely love about these printables is that you can print them with a laser printer using black toner, and you'll be able to foil these images using a mink machine or a laminator. Now, since I'm using black and white papers, the foiled images and sentiments can add that pop of color. So here I've sorted all of my pieces into cellophane bags and I will be cutting my layers next. I'll be sharing the cards that I made with this black and white paper pad at a later time here on my YouTube channel. So make sure you're a subscriber and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of my new uploads. I also want to mention that there will be a big giveaway video hop on April 2nd, where each of my 15 design team members will be sharing the card making process for each of the 15 sketches in this challenge and you'll have a chance to win a goodie bag filled with card making supplies from some of our awesome company sponsors i hope you'll hop along with us to get some wonderful ideas and tips for challenge 10 and have a chance to win the goodie bag now let's talk about all of the amazing company prize sponsors for kendra's card challenge number 10. we have 19 company sponsors for this quarter with prizes totaling more than one thousand dollars the sponsors for this challenge are Alta New, Artful Angel, Catherine Pooler Designs, Colorado Craft Company, Gina K Designs, Cat Scrappiness, Craft and Kimmy, Lawn Fawn, Not Too Shabby Shop, Pear Blossom Press, Pink and Maine, Polka Doodles, Prickly Pear Stamps, Scrappy Tails Crafts, Sweet November Stamps, This Calls for Confetti, TLC Designs, Uniquely Creative, and Whimsy Stamps. You can see the full list of prizes on my website. 
Now, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the Kendra's Card Challenges patrons that are shown here. I really appreciate your generosity and support. It really means a lot. I hope that you enjoy your handmade cards that I send out each month and also all of the other benefits that you receive as a patron. Remember, you have until June 30th of 2023 to create your cards and get them posted to the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group or uploaded to the form. If you think you might give this challenge a try, leave me a comment. I'd also love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and share this challenge with any of your crafty friends who you think might enjoy it. If you're a subscriber to my YouTube channel already, thank you for continuing to support my channel. If you're not, I hope you will consider subscribing. I also hope you'll join us on challenge number 10 and share your creations on Facebook, Instagram, and or YouTube. Now don't forget to check out the KCC 10 giveaway hop that starts April 2nd for a chance to win. I appreciate you watching this video. I can't wait to see what you create and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.